everyone. Welcome to an episode, another episode of Financial Fitness brought to you by the Old Fashioned Health Network, Good Health Inside and Out. I'm here with the host, creator, director, producer, you name it, he's got it. Yes. Alvin Watson, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give him a round of applause. Good to have you on the show, thank sir. You, Appreciate it. Hey, Appreciate thank it. you for joining us today. Um, Alvin, you created this network. You created this show. One of the things I kind of want to talk to people about um, is the process of going into business. All right. I remember our first conversation um, when we first talked on the phone. Right. And what you wanted me to do, you had, we had a short conversation. I told you right. what I did. Right. It was a piece that you needed to fit into your, not necessarily fit into your puzzle. I needed it. I needed but it, it was a piece, puzzle. yes. Right. It, was a, it was a piece that you needed to be a part of the puzzle. Another chess move, so to speak. Right. Like I'm that. talking about myself, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, <laughs> 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 I'm myself. Yeah. <laughs> no. But when it came to building this brand and building this business, mm. what is one of the things that you would say went into that process? So, um, so as the director producer of Old Fashioned Health Network, uh, it was important to me to build a network that encompasses everything pertaining pertain to health. <clears throat> that means from the fitness part to the financial fitness part to the food we eat to the mental piece of it, uh, the educational piece of it. There's several different shows on the network uh, that covers that. Uh, the, the reason why it's called the Old Fashioned Health Network, and it's the part that was uh, missing for me, which was you with the financial. Uh, network piece. Yes, sir. So it was important for me to have all those pieces together to encompass good health inside and out. Awesome. Um, from the entrepreneurial route that you took in this process, what was what would you say your cost, your the startup, the okay. getting the domain name, getting the business? Uh, okay. Or what was that process like? So uh, first, okay, starting a business. First of all, uh, you know, there's a few steps. Uh, you got the, the the domain name, the business license, secretary of state, and all those kind of things. But none of those were steps that would prevent me from starting the business. Okay. I had to start with or without <coughs> a little bit at a time. Yeah. So uh, the cost is it just depends on what you're trying to do. If you already got some money already set aside and you can afford to do the business license and you start doing the secretary of state and you get your attorney to write up your articles of incorporation all those kind of things now for me unfortunately but fortunately i didn't have all the financial the money to start the, the basic of the business because you know your secretary of state costs one thing your business license costs another so forth and so on so i learned to do those things on my own i learned how to to file uh, my articles of incorporation and, and i know how to send it over and, and pay for that and then you have to decide on what do you need first? Is it important for you to have a business license? You don't always need a business license okay. to start a business. Sure. Because the one thing about a business license, you pay $75 for the business license, and then you pay a fee as to how many people you're out working for you, and then there's taxes associated with that later on. So you have to think about, are you doing a, a marketing business, or what are you doing? Do you really need a business license to start with? And, and, and if you were like me, I started from home, working at home. Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily have to have a business license. You know, So the so, costs could vary from from what you can afford out your pocket step by step or $2,500 at the end of the day for just to start a piece of it. You just hit on a very key point that I think a lot of people focus on. Mm -hmm. That's cost. Now, yeah. that cost brings about fear. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those that have that fear um, Man. of starting the business, fear of cost of their business, mm -hmm. fear of not being profitable with their business? Mm -hmm. What is something that people really should focus on rather than just the cost, the money, the that aspect of it. So I would say the thing you should focus on is your passion for the business. Uh, if you don't have the passion for the business you're in, then you don't need to be in business. You have to have a passion. I had a passion for health and fitness and nutrition, good health inside and out, mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. <clears throat> so if you don't have a passion for it, then you don't need to even mm -hmm. do step one of the business. And then the, the second thing of it is, you was asking me about the, the, the uh, cost of really, mm -hmm. uh, with it. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so even with the cost, if you ain't willing to lose the business you're starting in, and I know it's, people tell you that don't go into the mindset of thinking you're gonna lose, but you need to go into the mindset of thinking, even if I have to lose, I'm gonna do this business. And that's awesome because a lot of people go in with that mindset mm -hmm. 
of well, let's win, let's do it this way, let's do it my way. And then when they lose, it's that punch in the face, yep. that first taste of loss, mm-hmm. and they don't know how to get back up. You right. found a way through that. What were some of the ways that you kind of battled and contested with being knocked down? You mean after loss this? number eight or number ten or number two? <laughs> I mean, which one of the losses? I didn't know about? was that many losses, oh, brother. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. So the loss, the loss to me wasn't necessarily a loss, but it was a building, building for me. Um, the, the, I started several different businesses, and, and then that didn't work out. I started another one, and that one didn't work out. But the odd thing about it, they all were centered around what I'm currently doing yeah. now, some way or the other. And so I, I, I started one, financially couldn't make that one work, started another one, and it's always something, and you couldn't make it work, or it, it, it's a few losses to build a win. You know, it, it, it takes a few losses, and then the win is not quitting. Mm-hmm. The win is not because you made $2 million last year, or $20 million the year before, it's the fact that you didn't quit. That is really the win. Yeah. Hi there, healthy people. Do you have a healthy product or service? If you are a certified medical professional, fitness trainer, author, or chef, Old Fashioned Health would love to promote your services or product on the Old Fashioned Health radio show. Please reach out to us. Call 404-793-3960 or email us at oldfashionedhealth at gmail.com. One of the things that I see people uh, talk about the most, Mm. especially in business, is how do I separate my LLC, mm. my S Corp, my C Corp when I go into it? Like, how should I produce it? And when I tell people being in the bank, well, you know, I'm, I'm not on the entrepreneurial level just yet. I still work a nine to five and that's okay because right. they, even working your nine to five, you're building a business now as we're doing this right now, nine fifteen, nine thirty 9.30 on a I know, right? uh, <laughs> Tuesday night. Right. You have to continue to be in the mindset of I will get out of mm. this rat race so to speak of right. the of the nine to five right. um and when people go in they create these businesses this s corp and they think you know for tax purpose this tax mm-hmm. purpose that when it came to naming this show a lot of people like to name businesses after themselves right it's easy. <laughs> no what do you think about that man i would not name a business after myself maybe a non-profit mm-hmm. is cool mm-hmm. you know like the Gerard Foundation, yeah, you know, the Gerard yeah. Financial Foundation. Mm-hmm. That that's okay. Uh, but an LLC, an incorporation, yeah. incorporation, no, no, I wouldn't do that. That's that's uh, for branding purposes. That may not be a good idea. For tax purposes, that may not be a good yeah. good idea. Uh, C corp, S corp, and all those kind of different corporations. I can. Uh, as a bank, I'm sure you know S corp means both of y'all sharing the profits and the losses. Mm-hmm. C corp, that's for the corporation. But here's the thing about that. Uh, you have to think about when you're doing a C Corp, LLC, and all those kind yeah, of things. Yeah. If you do a C Corp, uh, then there's minutes. Yep, that you have to include. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so many people have to sign them. And then when you yeah. go to the bank to open up the account, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, when you open up a business account for a C Corp, mm-hmm. you have to include your minutes. And right. on those minutes, you have to have uh, the meeting. The, the meeting and it has to be at least three right. three to four people in a C Corp. It can't <laughs> right, just right. be two people right. like an LLC or an S Corp right. or um, um, a limited liability right. partnership. Mm-hmm. Um, that keyword, limited liability. Right. Again, folks, when we talk about LLCs, that limits the risk of mm-hmm. you and your business. Right, right. Um, and it's very important that you understand when you go in, what am I looking for? Because a lot of people who may create a corporation, they may want an IPO one day. Right. Those who don't know what IPO means, that means you want to go public with your company, mm-hmm. create a public option for people to buy your com- buy stock in your company, mm-hmm. therefore investing in you. Right. When is that day coming for you? So, uh, one or question. is that day coming? Right. So that's a good question. So sometimes you may feel like I don't want to be a publicly traded company. I mm-hmm. want to stay private. Uh, you got to understand what your purpose is in business, and once you know your purpose and what your goals are, then you may determine. I want to say a private entity. Your purpose. Oh, yeah, your, your pur- purpose you, is awesome. Your purpose is so important. And then if you get it to just make some money and, and uh, build it and sell stock in it, and then that's a whole different yeah. thing. And but you still have the option. You can always change from an S Corp to a C Corp yeah. LL and all that and all that kind of thing. But uh, for me right now, my purpose is to make a difference. 
And that's through health, that's through business, that's, that's through finances, yeah. that's through fitness. All Not the just this show, but like you said, all the products. And what that does is that's giving back. Right. That's building others. That's people mm-hmm. recognizing your brand as others continue to see it. Right. Um, one of those things that people start to build businesses on, they solely focus on the profitability. Mm-hmm. It's right. both. They solely focus on the money. And that's why I think a lot of people run into the trouble. Um, once growth started happening for you, how did you kind of separate yourself from <laughs> the excitement that a lot of people so, into? So uh, the growth is still starting to grow. Uh, I've not reached a, a pinnacle point where it's like all the money flowing in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's still day to day a lot of work. Uh, I'm not making a lot of money right now. Uh, to the point I can say, well, hey, I'm making a lot of money. Let me just turn the wheel. Over. Uh, but it's a building process. But when I start seeing, okay, now it's starting, the reward is starting to pay off. I've been in business, this particular network, for over five years before I can start seeing, wow, it's starting to make money. Can you imagine trying to survive that long? Man. Without make, but here's what I did. Man. Now, you mentioned a side hustle. By trade, I'm a web developer. I develop mm-hmm. websites and apps. So I would take the money I would make from my marketing, home-based marketing business, and take that money by a little bit of this, by a little bit of that. And, and you have to pay attention to when you're in business, what, what's gonna cost you money, what's not gonna cost you money. I wouldn't do a C corporation for the fact that I'm not gonna write minutes and I'm not gonna have anybody writing, and I, I couldn't have all those people. So I did something that I could control. Yeah. So you do what you can control, and another thing, if you can't afford to do it, if you can't afford to pay somebody to do it, learn how to do it yourself. That's true. That's true. Uh, a lot of people want to outsource it. A lot of people want to cut costs. And for some people, mm-hmm. they can do that when they start off. They may have investors. In the right. Company. They may right. have those people. You said something just a minute ago that I thought that I found very, very, very important, mm-hmm. um, especially with people who do have the 9 to 5 and the cost. Right. So a lot of people don't have a budget plan. Right, for right, right. 60% right. needs to be profitable. 70% possibly needs to be profitable. Right. Your 10% or 20%, however much you want to put back. So either you're going to have a 60, 30, 10 rule, right. a 70, 20, 10 rule. And there's like, another rule. <laughs> What's do the that best rule? you can with what you got. Do the best you can with what you got. <laughs> I found myself when I first started my uh, flipping business and mm-hmm. thrifting business, uh, and that's something I can control. That's right. something that I go out and I buy my products, I place them on certain marketplaces, right. and I do well. And I've learned to put that money away personally. Then, has there ever been a time where you've had to dip into the business where people mix their business and personal expenses? That's gonna happen, right. but tell us about your experience. Yeah, I have and still do. So let, let me explain to you uh, about being in business that one of the things that, that, that I have to when you can spit out the 50% you can do this and 30% you can do that and 40% you can do that, to me that's a safe zone. Mm-hmm. But when you only have this amount, at that point it's not a 30% I can do, it's what is the most urgent that needs to be done to keep me surviving. It's kind of like treading water. You know you can't swim to the bank right yet, but you're close to it. So all you can do is tread water, you're doing what you have to do mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Or what the best is for your options. So you can't take say, well, I'm gonna take $100 and I'm gonna spend $10 on this and I'm gonna pay $15 on that and then I'm gonna take another $15 and spend it over here. It's $40, you got less or you got it. It's hard when you're in business to predict what's gonna be, especially if you start with nothing. Mm-hmm. If you start with nothing, you got to, you, you, that means your passion is serious. You gotta do what you want to That's true. About. Mm-hmm. Uh, business credit, how do, how do people go about building that in the financial world where I am? So much of it is tied to your personal mm-hmm. credit, but you do find businesses that do get established and there's certain regulations, certain banks you have to have an account for two years. You have right. to be in good standing for that process. You can't have a certain amount of overdrafts in that time. Right. And you have to establish some personal lines of credit mm-hmm. as well to get that business. When it came to your business, have you had to do anything like that thus far? Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the ways to establish a line of credit is you can get those um, Uline magazine, those magazines that offer you uh, to order office supplies and things like that. Easiest, easiest way to get a line of credit. I'm not talking about your traditional staples and stuff like that, but I'm talking about those big magazines that you don't see the storefront from, but you can order supplies. Those are the easy and the most flexible one mm-hmm. to, to work with you. So you get uh, order some pencils and stuff like that. They will uh, add it to your credit, but it's to your Dun and Bradstreet number. 
and that's added to your business and that sets you up on the road to getting business credit and you can get a secured credit card mm -hmm. for like $350 or $200 make sure you want in the business name and then you're on the road and I truly don't feel comfortable with people saying if you give me $1,500 I'll put two trade lines on your credit I'm mm -hmm. just not yeah I, I'm, I'm yeah. not comfortable for that you Agreed. know what I'm saying I just rather say let me it's a business. I'm trying to run the business, and I want to be able. To, I don't want nobody coming back and saying this business was started and something happened. You know. Yep, and that's the mindset you have to put yourself into when running a business. Protect your brand. Protect your brand. Mm -hmm. Protect your brand at all costs. Right, right. Something that you know we've had several conversations on. I mean, as you continue to mentor me throughout this process, um, you have to watch out for those around you not mm -hmm. necessarily a negative connotation right. but you've got to be able to pay attention to what's going to benefit the business right what's going to benefit you right and what's right. going to benefit your uh customer base what's going to benefit the employee base right. if you have employees mm -hmm. everything is going to circle around one another and you will have to figure out how to divide it into the right concept yes. of where you want your business to flow to right 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 alvin always a pleasure this has been a great show, as thank always. You, you. I like this Guys, show. thanks for turning. Of course you like this show. <laughs> you. <laughs> guys, thanks so much for tuning in to Financial Fitness on the Old Fashioned Health Network. We'll catch you guys next time. Take care.